Assalamu alaikum my dear students today i welcome you to my online class our topic will discussion will be insulin as we know insulin is one of the important hormone that comes from endocrine portion of the pancreas that is islets of langerhans in the islets of langerhans there are actually four types of cell present a cell or alpha cell b cell or beta cell delta cell or d cell and P cell or F cell or PP cell which secretes pancreatic polypeptide. From alpha cell or A cell there is glucagon. From beta cell we got the hormone insulin and from delta cell we got somatostatin and from F cell or PP cell we get pancreatic polypeptide. All the four hormones are polypeptide in nature and most of the cells are beta cells about 60 to 70 percent so the most abundant hormone that comes from endocrine portion of pancreas is the insulin and this insulin is one of the important anabolic hormone of our body so what is this uh, anabolic hormone means it means that it actually stores up carbohydrate protein and fat in our body so it actually a hormone of anabolism that means it stores carbohydrate, protein and fat in our body. There are other anabolic hormones present in our body like growth hormone or testosterone but insulin is one of the most important anabolic hormone in our body. Chemically insulin is a polypeptide containing 51 amino acids in two chains A chain and B chain and these A chain and B chain are connected by disulfide linkages so disulfide bondages bond this a and b chain a chain contains 30 amino acids and the b chain contains 21 amino acids so this polypeptide hormone synthesizes in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the beta cell as pre pro hormone and this pre pro hormone then breaks down into pro hormone and then it forms the hormone insulin so pre pro insulin forms pro insulin and pro insulin forms insulin and this insulin is stored or packaged into the golgi apparatus and whenever insulin is needed it is secreted from the golgi apparatus by exocytosis so this insulin has got several important actions in our body and if we divide the actions in three categories there is a rapid action we got the intermediate action and we got the delayed action. The rapid action of insulin occurs within seconds, the intermediate action of insulin occurs within minutes and the delayed action of insulin occurs within hours to days. So what are the rapid or within seconds insulin does? Insulin causes increased transport of glucose, amino acids and potassium ions into the insulin sensitive cells. It occurs within seconds. So the glucose transport, amino acid transport and the potassium transport is increases by insulin. Now comes to the intermediate action or the actions which occur within minutes. Within minutes it causes increases of the protein synthesis, decreases protein breakdown, increases the activity of different glycolytic enzymes and stimulates the action of glycogen synthase, inhibition of protein degradation. These are the actions of insulin which are intermediate in action. And in case of late actions or actions which occur within hours to days, insulin causes the increased synthesis of different types of messenger RNAs for different lipogenic and other enzymes. So as a whole, these are the actions of insulin. If we think about the insulin sensitive cells in our body, actually the insulin sensitive cells are the muscle cells and the adipose tissue and liver. So um, these cells insulin causes entry of glucose by facilitated diffusion. As we know in facilitated diffusion we need a transport protein and in this case the transport protein is known as glucose transporter 4. GLUT4. There are actually seven types of glucose transporters in our body but insulin dependent 
glucose transporter is only the glucose transporter 4 which is present in the adipose tissue, in the skeletal muscle, in the cardiac muscle, in some other tissues of our body and insulin dependent glucose entry is dependent on this glucose transporter 4 by facilitated diffusion. Other than this, there are other tissues which do not require insulin for glucose entry just like our brain or the adult testes, uh, th there is the RBCs or different WBCs, they do not read insulin for entry of glucose. But our adipose tissue, our muscle tissues and in some cases liver required insulin for glucose entry. In case of liver, it is not actually the glucose transporter 4, there are other mechanisms that are involved in glucose entry into the liver. So, glucose transporter 4 is important for adipose tissue and for the muscle tissue and from some other tissues. So, what does it do in adipose tissue? In case of adipose tissue, insulin, uh, the functions of insulin are like uh, it causes increased glucose entry, increased free fatty acid entry, increased fatty acid synthesis, increased triglyceride deposition, uh, inhibition of fat breakdown, increases the activity of lipoprotein lipase and inhibition of the activity of hormone sensitive lipase and it also causes increased entry of potassium ion. So as a whole it causes increased fat deposition in the adipose tissue. So what happens in the muscle tissue? In the muscle tissue it also causes increased glucose entry. This glucose is trans, uh, converted into glycosin by activity of the glycosin synthase. Also insulin causes increased protein synthesis and decreased protein breakdown and increases the amino acid transport and increase potassium transport. So these are the functions of insulin in muscle tissue. So what happens in liver? In the liver it causes increased glucose entry, increased uh, plasma proteins entry, increased free fatty acid entry and these glucose are converted into glycosin. These plasma proteins are converted into proteins and there is also fat synthesis occurring in glucose, occurring in liver by insulin and also it decreases the formation of different types of uh, gluconeogenic enzymes so that gluconeogenesis is prevented. As a whole, if we think about the action of insulin, it actually lowers the blood glucose level and it increases the stores of glucose uh, as glycosin, uh, it increases the store of protein and it increases the store of fat in our body. That is why it is an anabolic hormone. If we think about the half-life of insulin, that means the time it remains in our blood, it is very much shorter. It is about only 5 minutes. So, the half-life of insulin is 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, it is degraded by different enzymes. So whenever insulin comes to the target organs that is to the adipose tissue or to the muscle tissue, it actually binds with insulin receptors. The receptor has also got two parts. One part is extracellular that means outside the cell and another part is intracellular. The extracellular part is known as alpha part and the intracellular part is known as beta part. And the beta part has got tyrosine kinase like activity. So whenever the insulin binds with the receptor, it activates the alpha part and beta part and the beta part activates the tyrosine kinase enzyme and that tyrosine kinase enzyme causes uh, different types of cellular reactions by insulin receptor substrates just like uh, increased glucose entry, increased plasma protein, uh, increased different types of amino acid entry, increased different types of fatty acid entry and causes different types of metabolic anabolic reactions inside the cell. So uh, by this way insulin acts on different target tissues. If we think about um, the clinical settings of uh, insulin deficiency or insulin excess, insulin deficiency causes uh, hyperglycemia and insulin excess causes hypoglycemia and insulin deficiency is a cause of a very common clinical condition which is known as diabetes mellitus and this diabetes mellitus is actually due to chronic hyperglycemia either due to 
absolute or relative deficiency of insulin. Absolute deficiency means there is total lack of insulin, uh, may be due to autoimmune destruction of the beta cells of pancreas or relative deficiency means insulin is present in our blood but it cannot act properly on the target tissues to enter glucose or amino acids. It may be due to hyperlipidemia or uh, increased fatty acid levels or increased ketone bodies in, in our blood. These two ways there is insulin deficiency which causes diabetes mellitus and insulin excess it is also dangerous. Um, insulin excess may be due to di uh, different types of tumor in either in the islets of Langerhans of the pancreas or in different parts of GIT. And if there is hyperinsulinism, then it causes hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia may cause uh, coma or death. So both hypersecretion or hyposecretion of insulin is dangerous for our body. So if there is uh, insulin deficiency, we are more concerned about insulin deficiency because nowadays this condition is uh, gradually increasing day by day and insulin deficiency causes disturbance in the metabolism of the three metabolic pathways that means metabolic pathway of carbohydrate, metabolic pathway of protein and metabolic pathway of fat. In carbohydrate metabolism hyperglycemia causes osmotic diuresis and loss of glucose and water and salt from our body which lowers the blood volume. In case of protein metabolism, there is negative nitrogen balance or there is no protein stores in our body which also aggravates this osmotic diuresis. Plasma proteins and proteins are washed away from our body through the urine. And in case of fat metabolism, increased free fatty acids in the blood causes ketone body synthesis. And these ketone bodies aggravates these uh, osmotic diuresis, dehydration and ultimately coma and the person will uh, die. So these consequences of insulin deficiency is much more complicated than insulin excess. So as a whole though insulin is not a life-saving hormone just like aldosterone or parath hormone the metabolic pathways it affect in our body are very much important. So uh, in order to maintain good insulin level in our blood we have to modify our lifestyles. We have to take a balanced diet. We have to maintain a healthy lifestyle. We, we should avoid smoking or alcohol drinking or we should avoid taking too much fatty foods, too much sugar containing foods. And also we have to go for some exercises so that our insulin level in our blood is maintained. Actually lifestyle modification is a very important thing in controlling the occurrence of diabetes mellitus. So we should try to lead a healthy life which will lead a happy life. So we should always try to maintain a good insulin level in our body. Thank you for your patience hearing. This is all for today. Inshallah we will meet next time with some new topics. Thank you. Allah Hafiz and Fiyamanillah.